Hey, was that cool or what? That was good. That was good. Um, I just wanted to give another quick shout out to the people across the world. We are, we are receiving pictures from you all where there's meetings going on around the world. Do we have those pictures? We have that feed in the back. I know it's back there. Okay, well, we've got some pictures coming in from all around the world, and we had one set of pictures. There they are. These people are, uh, uh, I believe they're over in the West Coast or East Coast, but we got people filling up rooms, and we just wanted to wave to you, and we just wanted to welcome. Come on, everyone. Give everybody a... All right. Fantastic. Well, wish you were here. We're having an exciting time. We look forward to you being here at the next great event. All right, with that said, I met this gentleman last night. Uh, we were having uh, we were having some dinner last night, and he was telling me about a story about his little baby. And when he said his name was Dr. Michael, I said, I know you. You're the guy on the, on the YouTube video. And uh, I said, I, I'm sorry. I said, I didn't know you were coming. And I said, uh, I said, what's the chances of we putting a quick, few quick slides together and giving, giving all the distributors a, a real treat this morning? I'm telling you, this story, get the Kleenex out, folks, because this story is going to rock the tears. It gives me great pleasure to bring on stage Mr. Dr. Michael from Atlanta, Georgia. Hello, everybody. Ooh, hey, I am back on. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, Brian. You, I Thank appreciate it. Well, I am really glad to be here. I was in Okinawa and hadn't planned on coming, and everybody said, you got to go, you got to go, you got to go. So I thought, okay, we got to go. So my wife and I made plans, and we came, and I have the opportunity to learn from the people that helped me so much to get me to where I'm at right now. Um, my name, of course, is Dr. Michael Donaldson. Uh, I'm a chiropractor out of Atlanta. I graduated in 96. We do a lot of alternative care therapies, biofeedback, bionetics, laser allergy, all kinds of cool things. And as a physician, anybody here ever try to convince a doctor about the water? We're not stubborn, are we? Um, anybody dealt with a skeptic? Have anybody dealt with a critic? I was somewhere between a cynic and an opponent. I have made the position and clearly stated that alkaline water didn't work, that it was a fraud. <clears throat> and the reason that I had done that was because on May 28th of 2009, I, gra I got enrolled in the School of Hard Knocks. Gastroschisis is a short gut syndrome where basically your insides are on your outsides. This is not, there we go, Skylar. She is the most amazing person I've ever met in my life. She was born inside out. Everything from her stomach had gotten hung up on the outside. And her intestines, liver, pancreas, spleen, large intestine, small intestine, right ovary, bowel, were all on the outside. And when you think things can't get worse, the intestines burst. They did eight weeks on a colostomy, eight weeks reversing it, getting the bowels to try to work. Lexi is probably the best big sister in the world because every day she'd go to the hospital. We spent a year at Scottish Rites Children's Hospital in Atlanta. I can get you any floor, any department on my cell phone. They knew us very, very well. And then when things started to get better, it makes a beautiful child. We talk about dehydration like it's some slow process or it's some insignificant thing. You go from this to this in hours. According to what the doctors that you're talking to know, you get most of your water through the bowel. When the bowel shuts down, everything goes wrong. We went numerous times to Scottish Rite, and I'd say, it's Michael, I've got Skylar, she's in acute dehydration. And when you go to a children's hospital and all four emergency room doctors and the whole staff surround your table, and they leave the lady at check-in, it's a bad day. She got better. They ended up putting this thing that's called a Mickey button. It's not a Disney souvenir. It's a port in her intestines. That port was on a continuous force feed. 
That means she was fed seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And every morning when we woke up, just imagine what comes out the other end and is dripping across the beds, the pillows, the stuffed animals, the floor. And you took a shower with that to rinse her off every day. The water had an impact on me that you can't even imagine. So because of this, I wanted to find out the best way to hydrate. I looked up every kind of water alkalizer, ionizer, you name it. I've used the Jupiter, the Melody, the Microlite, the Royal, the Aqualeave, the Valera, the Ion, and they had abysmal results. And I concluded that basically it was a scam and it didn't really work. I can explain to you the research why the stomach neutralizes the pH and why it can create calcification. What I can't explain to you is why in six months I got this on Kangen water. <clears throat> Now, a little more background. Bless Amy Tyler's heart, because she walked into the office of an opponent and a cynic that was extremely well-educated and wrong. The, I actually tried the water under duress. We had six or seven people come into our office and try to pitch it to us. And honestly, we have so many people trying to pitch us so many things, it gets annoying. And I had tried all the water ionizers, and I knew. And we had some tests run. Long story short, Skylar was in failure to thrive, hemorrhaging from the bowel, unknown bleeding, anemia, you name it, it was a bad day. And she's laying on the table as I get this phone call. And so as a chiropractor, you know how we adjust your neck, right? I'm trying to regroup from this note, and Amy pops up and goes, Dr. Michael, Skylar doesn't need to suffer because you're too stubborn to try the water. I'll give it to you for free. I finally turned around and said, okay. In my mind, I was like, God, she's here for this, so it means something. I'm going to sit down, but I'm standing up on the inside. I said, fine, Amy, I am done. Now, you've got to understand, she was a pharmaceutical rep. She read Guyton's book of medical physiology. She came in and said, I understand the pH thing. I don't know why it works, but it does. I'm like, what are you going to do? She just... <clears throat> So I'll try your water and then I'll run the tests and I will prove to you that you are wrong, that I am right, and then you have to promise never to bring it up again. She's like, fine. So that was a Thursday. She went, we had the water Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Monday morning rolled around. Now you've got to understand with a Mickey button, all this distension, gas, cramping, crying at night, Bowel sounds, just the gurgling, can't imagine. Uh, Amy, yeah, it's Dr. Michael. Yeah, I'm having crow for breakfast. I need more water to wash it down. <laughs> All of that was gone. Now, was it just the water? We were doing everything. We were doing nutrition, detox, foot baths, all that stuff. No, she wasn't doing just the water. But the water was a critical piece. And to answer that, Everything we do clinically to help a, a sick patient adds up to 28%. You take every sick person in the world, and there's something wrong with the 28% that isn't just water. This is not a cure. I'll tell you, some days it feels like it. My uh, oldest daughter was the youngest goalie to make the Olympic development at team in soccer. She had to quit. Sick patients affect the entire family, not just the patient. We couldn't go anywhere more than an hour to two hours away from Scottish Rite at any given moment for three years. Our lives shut down. I wouldn't be in Orlando because I had to be close to the hospital. You couldn't get someone to babysit your child because that little button, she bumps it, it rips out. Not that often, you just have to stick it back in. Anybody want to babysit that? No, I didn't think so. <clears throat> it's not a cure, it's just science. It can save your life. But if you don't make healthy choices, your benef health benefits are going to be short-lived. It gives you the best possible 72% of your body to work with. That gets nutrition in, toxins out, increases energy, health, and healing. What I had to figure out was, as hard as I researched, why was I wrong? Simple. Your body's a saltwater aquarium. If you never change the water or get the filtration system going, 
you get a dirty aquarium and your fish die. Patients walk into our offices and this is what they've got. Coke, tea, coffee, you know, GMO foods, you name it. So what we ended up doing was going, okay, so let's start with a basic process. How do you get this cleaned up? You get it cleaned up through cellular respiration. That's the means which you get good stuff in, oxygen and nutrition, and get the bad stuff out, CO2 and toxins. What's the mechanism by which this works? Hopefully you can see, see the yellow line around the outside and all the H positives? Can you see that? I don't think I have a pointer. Nope, I don't. Anyways, that hydrogen is extremely important. When you do a detox foot bath, what it's doing is increasing the hydrogen potential on your cell so that it can pulse to get stuff out. The other thing that we discovered was what's called an aquaporin. That's that little green thing in the middle. It's a high-speed hydrating mechanism. It's the plumbing system for water in your cells. It will transport glycerol, CO2, ammonia, urea. It will take hydroxyl, hydrogen across that membrane. But it only does it in a single file, which means it has to be really dispersed to go through that hole. The other thing is it's completely impermeable to charged particles. That means that that hydrogen ion with that charge gets stuck on the cell membrane, energizing it so it can pulse harder. When I say pulse harder, think like a jellyfish. If you've ever had an MRI, they introduce a charge and a spark, and your cells pop open, they do it again, your cells collapse. They take a picture, the computer generates an image. That's how an MRI works in a real basic standpoint. This is what goes on in your cells. Your cells will pulse. That red circle with the six in it's the aquaporin. There's hemoglobin in there. And you can see how as it closes, CO2 toxins will pulse out. Oxygen and nutrition will go in. Toxins out, nutrition in. Well, when water clusters, clumps, gets bound up in what we would have referred to a lot of times as the macro cluster, the 16 to 25 molecules, it can't fit in that little hole. So why did all the other ionizers not work? Because they don't actually ionize. If you think about water like this, take a cluster of grapes and I want you to put them into that jug. Can you cram that whole clump in there? No. But if you take them all off and separate them out, you can funnel them right in. That's kind of the process that this works by. Um, and it's considered the um, ionization aspect. Ionization with oxidation potential is the ORP. I included this chart because it's not alkalinity. This water is not alkaline water. It's alkalized water. The alkalinity is introduced to it electronic, electrically, not by the adding of calcium. Has anybody ever done the chem test and it's like you do the pH strips and it doesn't work? Well, what happens is I did that because I'm a doctor and that's what we do is pH strips. They're chem strips. Well, if you start with a certain type of water, you run it through the machine, it doesn't change on those strips because you haven't added calcium, magnesium, and all the other stuff to it. It was already in the water. When you do the pool, you like, oh, we need to add more stuff. So you add all the chemicals, and then you get a chemical change. That was the answer for why I used the drops, because it was electrically charged water. The only one of these waters, there's about six of them up there that are alkaline water, but they have a high ORP, which means they're going to make you rust. They don't give you electrons. The other thing that every doctor will say is you can't separate, it's just H2O, you can't get hydrogen from it. Actually, it's called disassociation of hydrogen, which means you get a hydroxyl group and a hydrogen group. The easiest way to prove this, and it kind of made my brain hurt, somebody stuck a cigarette lighter and lit my water on fire. The only thing could be is hydrogen. You can hear it pop. If you go to my uh, Pinterest page, you'll see that there's a video where the guy does it, and I do it, and I think, well, okay, you shouldn't be getting hydrogen out of a filtered water, so it must not be just filtered. A more accurate explanation would be it's dissolved hydrogen in water 
which feeds that cell membrane that gives the cells the ability to absorb water. They hydrate better and it gets into the tissues. How do they do that with electrolysis? Well, electrolysis is basically a process. You have an electrolyte, which happens to be the water. You have current. You have plates. And some equation spits out, I'm a doctor, not an electrician, so I called a master electrician and said, explain this to me. He said, it's really simple. You need enough power and amperage in enough surface area to affect the materials you're working with. I said, I can work with that. So I started going to the different websites, and sure enough, I got an equation. So here's where those things come from. Those 25 dots over there represent the cluster of water. When you get a lightning strike or enough power on those plates, which is in the SD501, it will take that big cluster and separate it out. It energizes it like a static electricity charge. The more charge it has, the more it separates the water because the water will actually bounce away from each other. This is not accurate. It is a representation. 8.5 breaks the water down to a certain level. And it releases a certain amount of hydrogen and a certain amount of hydroxyl. That's where you get your difference in charges. That's why it changes the pH. Some of the water molecules will actually disassociate. The more power you use, the more it disassociates. The more it disassociates, the more hydroxyl and hydrogen you get. So if we look at 8.5, we get four little clusters of, say, six molecules. If we do 9.0, it would be five molecules of five. 9.5 would have six clusters of four. 11.5 could have 12 clusters of two. Again, that's not specific. It's a representation of the concept of why it works. You're not adding any calcium. You're not adding any hydrogen, I mean magnesium. You're simply creating more disassociation, and the energy in the water bounces off each other, so they tend to repel each other, and they don't stay clumped together. Ever been played with, like, um, iron filings? Have a magnet under it, they'll just clump up. Same difference. We grab a TV antenna, we get a signal. Why? Because we work on receiving electromagnetic signals. Telephones, Wi-Fi's, all that. <clears throat> so, why does that power factor so important to disperse it more? Potential electrolysis units is basically a combination of power multiplied by the surface area of the electrode. So you take watts times amps times the surface area. It gives you what's called a PEU. So the SD501 has 230 watts, 2 1⁄2 amps, and 466 inches of surface area for the plates. That gives you a PEU of 267,950. Yeah, it's a big number. However, I went to Alkaline Water Plus and started to look at all the power supplies. Because if it's electrolysis and they're doing this with energy, you take 110 watts, a half amp, and the average Korean mesh plate replacement has 117 square inches, you get 6,435 PEUs. That is roughly 2.4% of the power generated by the SD501. Well, if it doesn't have enough power to separate the molecules, you got to add calcium and magnesium, which was that research paper done by doctors that says it can lead to calcification of the arteries in the heart, because they're adding that in. They didn't use the SD501. Why? Well, if you had a $5,000 budget to buy machines, you buy five machines and roll with it. You don't buy one. Interesting note, those free electrons that we were talking about, one amp, and I had forgotten about this, was 6.24 times 10 to the 18th power. That means times 2, so it's like 15.7 to the 18th number of electrons that are being freed up and used with this machine per second. That's where your electron donors come from. It's just doing a rapid and phenomenal job. When you do that online comparison, look at the power line. Compare power to power, unit to unit. Don't compare a 230-watt unit to 110. Have your people. This is a competitor's website. You go right across, and there's 110, 110, 110, 110, a half amp amp. Oh, there's one for 230 and 2.5 amps. And you go all the way to the top, and it says SD501. 
it doesn't work like any other machine. Everybody knows the Otto Warburg issue. The bottom line is if you have a reduction of, in, of oxygen, you'll shut down the mitochondria. Well, as you release the hydroxyl and the hydrogen and you create and saturate the tissues with more available oxygen, you don't shut down the mitochondria. That's what leads to all the other health issues, not just cancer. Antioxidants, that's the OH and the H. They work as a hydroxyl free radical scavenger, gets all the issues. Well, what will rust in your body in an oxidant, oxidized environment is your hemoglobin. And everybody knows that hemoglobin is in your blood. But what ends up with is it's in your brain, your lungs, your tissues. Hey, Skylar. <laughs> she wants her daddy. This is her in the flesh. Happy and good. In short, your tissues may be so contaminated and loaded with oxidized hemoglobin that you can't transport oxygen. You, can't, you don't have the energy to deal with it, so you need more available hydrogen. How much do you drink? How fast do you want to get well? If a person weighs 160 pounds, they're 72% water. That means that they're 115 pounds. There's 8.3 pounds of water in a gallon so you're about 14 gallons. If you tell your people drink a gallon a day in 14 days, you'll have flushed the system. If they drink a half a gallon a day, it'll take 28 days. Hey, if you drink one 12 ounce can of soda, do this, it's a test you should all do. Don't take my word for it. Take a five gallon jug, fill it with 11.5 water and start pouring in a can of soda. You kill it all. You need nearly 10 gallons of water to neutralize that or an equivalent level of calcium pulled from your bones. This is just a thing that I did. That's a 32 ounce glass of water with a tablespoon of Sprite. Took about eight seconds to turn it all acid. Two people I'd like to thank specifically are Hiromi Shinya and Bob Wright. They put me on the path to helping get her well. Um, there's a lot of doctors. <clears throat> Dr. Kareen has become a great friend. She was in Atlanta. We spoke a lot. You know, the hydration issues. People, when they want to talk about doctors, don't let them Google anything. Send them to look for Dr. Hiromi Shinya, Ray Kurzweil, Terry Grossman, specifically Dr. Timothy McKnight, who I'm really excited to hear speak. Um, the skeptic, like I said, I was a defining end. And you'll help educate the physicians. And that'll get people weather. I like this one. It says, hmm, Henry, this looks good and all, but do you have any Kangen water in the house? <laughs> so Skylar, we call it sky water on our house because of obvious reasons. Oops, don't bump that baby. Uh, we want to change the world. We want to get the word out. We want to help people get well. The water works. We're, there's a um, YouTube video. You all are welcome to use it. I know people are going to think I'm insane. That is my personal cell phone number. That is the email address, another website to look at. There's a, this whole thing is done on a whiteboard on YouTube. Share it, get the word out. I don't mind talking to people. I love to travel, I love to help. Um, the water changed our lives, not just clinically, not just because of her health. It gave us back our freedom, it gave us back our life. It's given us a great income. Put a child in the hospital for a year, see what your financial issues are. Um, make it available. If you have a physician you're talking to, use that number. Oop, I skipped out. Use that number. Call me and say, hey, I've got a doctor. Can you talk to him? I'll probably say, no, I'm with a patient, but if you'll text me. Hey, my name's Dr. Michael. I'm with a patient, but if you'll text me your number, I'll call you at 6 o'clock when I close. I'll do anything I can to help as many people get well because families are hurting with this. So. Oh. Wow, wow. You're incredible, Dr. Michael. Come on, everybody, give it up. Look at the room. Incredible, incredible. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Glad You're to a help. blessing to have you on board with the magic, right? Come on, everybody, let me hear it. All right. Can I have Bernice come to the stage, please? We want to, how about doing some raffles?